Because it's 35 year anniversary, this year is really worth celebrating because with its first issue published in 1974, it's one of the oldest environmental research magazines in Australia, if not the world. And that's a testament to the longevity of the magazine too. I mean, through ups and downs um, and various changes in CSRO as an organisation, um, ECOS has managed to sustain its coverage and provide accurate and timely information on these issues to the general public and I think that's, that's a tremendous thing. CSIRO initiated ECOS in 1974 to fulfil the need that it saw to communicate to the public the outcomes of its environmental research. The environment at the time you know, wasn't a mainstream issue, but there was a need, as the national research body saw, to ensure that the population generally became aware of some of these emerging issues. So from 2001, the decision was taken to broaden ECOS out to cover the full spectrum of sustainable development because the environment had moved into the mainstream and it was time to, to repitch the magazine. So now it covers everything from environmental research all the way through to corporate social responsibility and other kinds of social development. So today in covering sustainable development, ECOS's objectives are really still the same as they were in 1974 and that's to encourage understanding and debate in the general public around these emerging issues. But um, today ECOS takes a positive solutions-based editorial stance and that's because in the general media out there there's plenty of gloom and doom, there's plenty of bad news around the coverage of these environmental topics and that's pretty demoralising. We think it's much more encouraging for people to read about positive solutions and the way the challenges are being met out there. Well we know from readership surveys that our readership is very loyal. Some of our subscribers have been with ECOS for, for over 15 years. Um, so that's a testament to the quality of the magazine and the trust that people see in, in ECOS. But we also know that with the new ECOS we've had a change in our readership demographic where once we perhaps had more older readers, um, say those retired researchers who are interested in keeping up with CSIRO research, we now know that because of our broader coverage of sustainable development that our readership say is between 25 and 45 and tertiary educated. So I think that's also a reflection of the broader interest in environmental issues out there in the public. I think another point is that if you look at the the coverage of ECOS over 35 years. It, it illustrates the magazine's had a real benefit and an impact for CSIRO out there and it's helped the public understand and engage with the organisation. Well there's a very important role for ECOS today and that's because there are a huge number of emerging environmental issues out there and there's no way that the general media can possibly cover them all in enough depth. So there's a role for a magazine like ECOS to look at these topics and provide information to the public on them from a research perspective. And it's something that the media can't do um, and ECOS is there to do that job. ECOS has to keep up with a very fast moving environmental agenda. So we're on our toes with that and uh, it's a challenge. But uh, we also have to maintain the viability of the magazine both in print and with a, a changing media world. The internet's becoming increasingly important and um, how we work with that is another of our challenges. Through its connection to CSIRO, ECOS is going to continue to do what it's always done and that's provide credible authoritative content on emerging sustainability issues from a research perspective.